Bring out your bread. Bring out your bread. Bring out your bread. Oh, hey, how's it going? What you up to? Oh, I'm uh, trying to collect food right now, uh, bread specifically. Uh, this pandemic was supposed to have been over by now, but uh, it's been the worst pandemic in human history uh, by by a lot. I, 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 don't, I don't know that this um, is the worst pandemic. Uh, nope, nope. Uh, COVID has killed more people than Spanish flu. Uh, okay, yeah, the, the numbers with Spanish flu were a little lower, but the, the population was exponentially smaller back then. Th this one's worse. Anyway, I decided to take a page book from a previous plague, again, not as bad as COVID, but the Black Death in Europe. Uh, you know, I saw in a, a documentary once, there was someone walking through the streets and uh, they had some kind of a cart or a wheelbarrow and they were yelling, bring out your bread. So I figured, well, if that worked during right, the... Right, yeah. With the Black Death, one out of three people in Europe died. Those carts were for dead bodies. They, they weren't calling out for bread. They were yelling, bring out your dead. Mm. No, nah, it was bread. Uh, I figured if that worked during the Black Death, then, you know, that could possibly work now. I need some bread, so... Bring out your bread! Do you have any bread for me? This is Praxis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make bread at home, on your own, and the only thing you have to buy from the store is flour and salt. Everything else you're going to source all by yourself, including the yeast, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So the first thing that you're going to need to make bread at home is some kind of a bowl. This is a mixing bowl that I use for bread all the time. It's got some flour already in it. I don't really bother to ever clean it out because I just constantly use it for bread. The other thing you're going to want is some kind of a lid so that you can put it on there when the bread's rising. You want to kind of keep it moist so it doesn't dry out on the top. So. Bowl, lid, pretty big bowl. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna want is to get some yeast. Now, yeast is something that you can source naturally from your environment, you can buy it from the store, or there's a third way where you can buy yeast from the store once and then kind of cultivate it and keep growing it forever after that. That's what I've been doing for a long time, and it's really, really super easy. I'm also, in this video, uh, gonna try to illustrate to you how quick all this stuff is, because I know uh, it's great to save your family, it's great to keep your family from starving to death, but hey, you know, we all got lives, and we don't wanna spend that much time on it. So you're gonna see how quick this stuff is, too. So we got our bowl, we got our lid, and here is our yeast. This is just an old salsa container that I've been cultivating the yeast in. Uh, the way that I started this uh, was that I put a packet of yeast that I bought from the store in here, and then I put three little scoops of flour, two little scoops of water in here, stirred it around, and then just let it sit in the refrigerator for a week. That's all there is to it. That's literally all there is to it. Uh, and I'm going to show you a little example of how to keep that going right now. So this is our yeast. We're going to put it in our bowl right here. One tool that I like to have on hand is a chopstick. If you don't want to buy a chopstick, you can use another tool. I, I find chopsticks are a really great way to do it. You can go outside and you can get a stick and you can sanitize it if you want. I'd recommend getting the bark off of it before you do it. But a stick is a really great way of kind of freeing this yeast material from the, uh, the sides of your jar and then kind of scraping up the edges of it. All right, so I'm getting kind of most of what's in there, out of there. There's still plenty of goo left in there and that's good because that is gonna be the start of our next colony. So I've scooped the yeast in here. I'm gonna leave the chopstick right there. I'm gonna set that off to the side and first thing I'm gonna do before I start with the bread is to get my yeast going for next time, okay? And the way we're gonna do that is we take this jar and I'm gonna open up a little box of whole wheat flour. Uh, and what I'm gonna do with the whole wheat flour is begin feeding our yeast. Now, I usually use a quarter cup uh, scoop to do this. You don't have to have a quarter cup, really it's ratios. It could be any kind of size, it could be a tablespoon, it could be uh, you know, an entire cup, it could be a dump truck full. The idea is ratios. Yeah, dump truck might be getting a little bit extreme, but it's ratios. The scoop I'm actually using here is approximately a quarter cup. It's just the measuring scoop that comes out of this uh, vegetarian protein powder. I keep these around because they're handy. It's about a quarter of a cup and it's totally good for what we're doing here. So I'm gonna get a little bit of flour. I'm not gonna like scrape it off, doesn't that be perfect? One scoop. Two scoops. And I'm putting them right back into that, that little glass jar I had there. Here it is, third scoop going in, tap, tap, tap. And now what we're gonna do is put some water in there. I've got this thing of water right here. I usually grab it from the sink, but uh, my sink didn't move over here very easily, so I'm just doing it here. 
All right, one scoop of water, and that's going right into that little jar, and then a second scoop of water. And I said it's uh, two scoops flour, one scoop, uh, I'm sorry, two, no, I didn't say anything like that. I said three scoops flour, two scoops water, but it's actually a little less than two scoops, maybe one and three quarters, a little bit less. Otherwise, uh, you find the stuff gets a little bit on the, on the mushy side. All right, so that's it. Three scoops flour, two scoops water, not quite two scoops. I'm taking that chopstick again, gonna stir this stuff around in here until it's just homogenized, like you're mixing cement. All right, so that is all mixed in. I don't see any dry patches. I'm gonna try to like rotate the stick out of here so we don't pull a bunch out. That is done, set that down. This is here, my refrigerator is right here, and this just pops in the refrigerator, and that will just grow there, and then next week when I want to make another loaf of bread, I can pull it out again. It takes about a week for it to grow in the fridge. If you leave it out on your counter, you can make a loaf of bread every day, because it'll be seven times faster in terms of growing. So back to our bread. I've got this pile of swill right here. I'm going to pull that ch uh, chopstick out of there. At this point, what I'm going to do is the whole wheat flour, I'm going to put it away and pull out just some white flour because I've got almost a cup of whole wheat flour in there and I'm going to mix it with some amount of white flour. I'm going to show you how precise you need to be with this. So here it is and something, yeah, something like that. Maybe something like that. I'm going to be making a uh, pizza bread dough. That's what we're working on right now. Uh, in terms of uh, sourcing these ingredients, you see that I'm, I'm grabbing them from these little boxes. I don't buy them in these boxes. These are storage tubs that I have for here in the kitchen. I buy it by the 50-pound uh, bag. Uh, here is a link uh, down below. I've got uh, links down in the descriptions uh, where you can get the same kind of organic flour that I use. Uh, you can get that and you get yourself a bag of salt. Uh, get yourself some yeast from the grocery store and you're all set to go because the flour is going to last you a long time, the salt is going to last you a long time, and that yeast, as long as you cultivate it, is going to last you forever. So we've got our uh, yeast in here, we've got our flour in here, we need to get some salt in here. Now well, you don't need to get salt in here, but bread tastes better if you do. Now here's how uh, precisely I'm going to do the salt. I've got this here, I've got my salt. I'm going to kind of just dust it like it's like snow on top of the mountain. Just a little bit on the top, right there, just like that. Um, that's it. I mean, you, you can put a little bit more, you can put a, bit, a little bit less. I find that it's good to go a little bit on the shy side because if you make a bread that has not enough salt in it, you can always say, ah, it's a little bland, but I'll just put some butter on it. Uh, if you put too much salt in the bread, don't put too much salt in the bread. <laughs> always, you know, err on the side of being a little bit on the light side, and then you can always add, uh, you know, something to the bread afterwards, you know, butter or, you know, even oil and salt or something. So it, you can always add it, it's hard to take it away later. So we just dusted it with salt. And the only other thing to do at this point is put some water in. And I'm gonna start slow with water, just like salt, you can always add more, it's hard to take it away. I got it in there and I'm using this little spoon here. And yes, this is a broken bamboo spoon. It split down the middle and I just took a uh, orbital sander and smoothed it all out. And it's actually one of my favorite kitchen tools because it, uh, kind of cuts through this stuff nicely. Now, as I'm uh, stirring this around, I've got that, that wet lump of uh, yeasty stuff in the middle, and I'm just trying to make it so it kind of uh, absorbs up all the, the dry flour in there. When you are done putting in the water, it should be just enough water in order to uh, make it so that there's no powder left. I usually find that uh, once I've gotten it all mixed together, uh, when I, I, I'll kind of let it sit overnight, and by the time the next morning comes around, it looks wetter than it was when I, when I left it. So, just like the salt, it's always uh, easy to add more water, but uh, hard to add less water. Although, if you add too much water, you can just add more flour. I'm gonna, I've still got some powder here, so I'm going to add a little bit more. Again, I'm, I can't tell your measurements because I don't measure anything. It's just kind of looking at it. And... I think it's, it's, it's really freeing getting out of the mindset that it has to be exactly this or exactly that or exactly perfect. There's all different types of breads. Some have more water, some have less water. There's all sorts of different flavorings you can put into breads too. I threw in some salt, but if you got some old cracker crumbs from the bottom of a thing of crackers, go for it. You got some salt from the bottom of a, a bag of pretzels, go for it. I, the 
most recent bread that I made, I had some leftover mushy, watery, starchy stuff left over from making latkes, and I used that instead of water, and it worked out just fine. The bread had kind of an oniony sort of smell to it. Okay, we're getting there. You see how uh, the bottom is there's just a few little pieces of grit left in there. I'm just gonna mush that around just a little bit, add just the tiniest bit more water just to get that, those last couple little things there. That might have even been a little too much. Yeah, that was a little bit too much water, but no big deal. The next step is that tomorrow morning, after this is risen, I'm going to uh, do my first kneading on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this down right now, get the rest of this dough off of this little stirring implement there. Maybe I can use a chopstick for that. A knife works for it as well. Just get the rest of the dough. That's valuable food right there. Get that off there. I'm gonna let this sit overnight and then tomorrow morning I'll wake up and I will show you tomorrow morning when this happens. I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna give it one kneading and then we will continue with the process. So I'm just gonna leave this right here. Here's an example of that recent bread. All right, we're just gonna cut right in. We're trying to show how fast this whole thing can go. It's the next morning right now, uh, and I've looked in here, and it looks like it's risen pretty well. It's got a little bit of a wet surface to it. Like I said last night, I thought I'd maybe put in just a little bit too much water. Not a big deal. We're gonna be able to just throw in a little extra flour, and let's just go right to it over on the counter. Okay, so the first thing to do is to put some flour on. I keep flour in a little device like this. I find this really handy and I just sprinkle the flour around the edges of the bread and then a little bit over the surface. And I can always add more flour later. And this is just white flour here. Uh, the first step to separate this from the bowl is to start digging your fingers around the edges and that's why you put all that extra flour at the edge because it helps to uh, get your fingers down around the edge if you can push the nice dry flour around the edges of where you're working and I just keep rotating the bowl, scraping deeper and deeper until I get the lump of dough separated. Now at this point a lot of times people will take this dough and they'll put it out on their counter and they'll knead it on the counter. I just knead it right in the bowl. Uh, the reason for that is that it just makes everything neater uh, so that I'm not having a, you know, a big mess on my counter. So I just knead this in the bowl by folding and pushing down and folding and pushing down. And what that's doing, it's folding uh, some of that extra dry flour into the bread. So that part's good. And what I want to do is get this to a consistency where it's not like sticking to my hands. Right, get some of this extra flour here. Now in the video I, I made uh, from last night, I mentioned that I just kind of keep reusing the same bowl. And that, I think, seems to work pretty well because I'm, I'm constantly cycling through new flour. If there was flour that was sitting in this thing forever, that might become a problem. But whenever I'm making new bread, I'm trying to kind of soak up the old stuff so that when stuff does get left in there, it's not, uh, not super old. So this is starting to get a little bit sticky on my fingers, so I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more flour over the surface of it. That makes it uh, more enjoyable to work on. Uh, so you, you might have a tendency of wanting to put a lot of flour on there just because you know some people don't like to have gross, sticky dough on their hands. Uh, you want to try to keep the keep the flour to a minimum. You know, it's enough so that the outside surface isn't sticking to your hands, uh, but it's not so much that it's going to make your bread overly dry because you want it to be a certain kind of consistency. As long as you get enough flour so that it's not sticking to your hands, then you're good. At this point, I'm starting to think about stopping. Uh, the dough is getting a real springy kind of quality to it here. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I could do it a little bit more just for fun, uh, but at this point I've achieved what I need to do and we're uh, trying to talk about how quick this can be. So I'm going to take it, kind of put all the folds on the bottom there, and I'm going to place it right back down in the bowl. I'm going to put the lid on and at this point I'm just going to leave this like that with the lid on there and leave it in. It doesn't have to be a warm place. If you put it in a warm place it'll rise a little bit faster. If you put it just at a room temperature place it'll eventually rise. It's just all about speed. Uh, but the point is we're going to wait for this to you know get bigger. Some people say double in size. You know, I, I'm not going to take out a tape measure and find out exactly what it's done. But we want this to just get bigger and clearly have risen. So here we go. Just lit it up and we'll wait. 
Okay, so it's been four hours and the temperature in the house is 67 degrees. We haven't done a fire today, so it's a little on the cool side, but still, even after four hours, it looks like it's risen pretty well. And we're going to get ready for the next step of the process, which is putting it into its final form. I'm going to be making a pizza out of this, but before we do the pizza, I figured I could kind of show you how we prep a pan uh, if you're going to be uh, doing a loaf of bread. Uh, this is just a steel pan that's not non-stick or anything like that, so uh, what I would do is just put a little oil in. I'm not going to do that because I have a disgusting habit of not cleaning my pans. This one's still oily, uh, and it even has a little bit of cornmeal left in it, but I always add a little bit of extra cornmeal. Uh, this is the kind of cornmeal I use. It's just organic cornmeal. I buy this in the 25 pound bag or 50 pound bag. I'll have a link down in the description if you want to get your own of exactly the same type of stuff that I use. And I just take some of the cornmeal and just dust it along the sides of the pan and a little bit on the bottom and, and that's it. And that'll just sit there for next time. Uh, next time I do make a loaf of bread, which will probably be in a couple of days. But for today, I'm going to be doing a uh, pizza tray here. Again, this already has some seasoning on it, so I'm not going to bother with oil. You, you would want to put a little oil on and spread that around first if you've got a pan that's squeaky clean. Uh, but what you always want to do is just put a little bit of cornmeal on there. And the function of the cornmeal, I guess it has a nutritional benefit, uh, but the function of the cornmeal in terms of practicality is that it makes it a lot easier to get your uh, bread out of your pan or your pizza off of the, uh, the pizza tray. So I use it as kind of like a, a form of release. Okay, so we've got this and uh, the way that I usually like to get it out of here is just give it a give it a flip. Oh, but I said I'd demo it in here first, didn't I? Right. Okay, so I can usually just flip it out when I'm going to be doing pizza. And what I would do with this is just fold this over a couple times. And you might do this in the bowl still here. It's getting a little sticky. Well, it looks disgusting with the bubbles on it, doesn't it? It's like it's diseased. All right, put a little bit more flour in there. Oh, you can see a huge bubble up here. So you can definitely see this is a, a good dough and the yeast has really worked over the past four hours. I'm going to fold it over a couple of times. Now, when I first started making breads, this always seemed like a really kind of uh, counterintuitive part of the process. You want your bread to be nice and fluffy, so why are you taking nice fluffy bread and squishing it all down and getting rid of all those nice bubbles and making it like, you know, firm piece of Play-Doh again? Uh, well, the reason for it, and I don't know the technical reason, but the practical reason, the uh, phenomenological reason that I've experienced when I do this is that you get bread that's a lot more chewy when you uh, knock it down a couple times. As you've seen through, through this video, there was the initial stirring when I uh, mixed the dough together and then there is the, uh, the first kneading, which I did this morning right when I woke up. And this is the second kneading and this is the last kneading. Sometimes people will do even more than that, uh, but I find that two kneadings gives you a nice springy dough. So we've got this, it's been knocked down, still got a few little bubbles in there. But if I was going to make a loaf of bread, got all these folds here at the bottom, I would just take it and lay it right there into the bread tray. Then I would put it in some kind of a box. I've got this right here, which I use a lot. This is, well, actually it's got a piece of bread, I'm using it as a bread box right now. Uh, this is just a, you know, it's a, just a little metal container and I will put the bread in there. And uh, I'll put it in kind of like a warm place or a not so warm place if I, if I can wait longer. And uh, that just keeps it humid and it allows it to, uh, to rise in there. Uh, I'm not going to be making bread in a, uh, a loaf today. What I'm going to be doing is doing pizza. And the way that I like to do the pizza is just take it and stretch it out as best I can. You can also roll it out. But I'll kind of do this. And you can see the effects of all that kneading that I did earlier. Had I not kneaded this stuff together, it would just fall apart in my hands. It would just be this gloppy mess. So it, the kneading uh, is pushing together all of these uh, fiber-like protein chains. And they are inter weaving with each other and they make it so that the stuff kind of sticks together. Once I get it like that, I'll just kind of spread it out a little bit. And uh, what I find is that oftentimes after I have uh, taken my, my dough and spread it out and I let it rise uh, for the final rise, which is going to be 
Yeah, maybe about two, three hours. Uh, today, I'm going to be leaving uh, just after lunchtime, and I'm not going to be back until the end of the day. So this is probably going to have a good five hours of rising. That's going to be totally fine. And what I'm going to do at the end is give kind of like a final pull to it. So I'm going to just keep stretching this, try to get it out to fill as much of the, the pan as I can. I'm working on the pan right now because it's convenient and it's out on the work surface, but uh, you can also just do this on your counter. What I am going to have to do is re-sprinkle uh, re cornmeal on this, on this tray because I've done this. All right, it's getting bigger and bigger. And ideally we want it to kind of fill up most of the tray, but the reality is when I come back and it's risen, it's going to have kind of uh, contracted just a little bit, and I'm going to have to give it one last little pull out before we turn it into a pizza. I think I'm going to call that good, but I am going to throw a little bit more cornmeal on here. So we'll just take this up, toss it there temporarily. Cornmeal goes on, and then we put the pizza on. Okay, and then we just uh, then we just wait. I will take this and I'm going to put it in the oven, not because the oven is on or warm or anything, but just because the oven is kind of an enclosed space and it can stay humid in there until later on, several hours from now, when we come to finish it up. Okay, so we're back from being out for several hours. I uh, got the fire lit. Normally, if I was going to be doing uh, bread as just a, a loaf, I'd be able to bake it in here and I'd start pre-warming the oven and get it in there. But we are doing pizza, so we're going to be over here in the kitchen area. We are going to just cook it in the regular conventional oven right here. Let's see how it looks. Just about how it was before, except uh, fluffier. Uh, I was thinking later on, I usually do like to spread it out a little bit. Uh, I think if it wasn't so messy earlier, I would have put it out here and kind of used a rolling pin to get it out a little bit more. But even though we didn't do that, this is totally uh, achievable. Uh, what we're going to do is just kind of fold it out. Now, uh, this is going to tend to want to slide around on this surface. So what I'm going to do is just put a little cloth down underneath it. There's a little hand towel and that gives it enough friction so that it's not going to uh, you know, want to uh, slide around. So after having washed my hands since we got back, I'm just going to take the edges and lightly pull them out. And you remember just a couple moments ago, for me it was about four hours ago, but for you just a couple moments ago when you saw I was trying to stretch this earlier, it was kind of fighting against it. But now that it's been sitting and rising for a while, it is stretching very easily. And the goal here is to try to make it so we don't have a lump right in the middle, so kind of get your fingers down in there and stretch it out. Now, if you wanted to do a loaf, you know, this would be kind of knocking down the bubbles to a degree that, you know, might not be, uh, you know, welcome. But for pizza, you know, it can have a bit of a denser crust and this is going to be totally fine. It's still going to be totally bubbly and delicious. So there we go. This is going to go in the oven. We're going to bake this at 550 degrees. That's as hot as this oven goes once we get all the toppings on. And I guess I'll just cut to the final result right here. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.